how professionals make that's where we need to concentrate and fortune is made by mastering few techniques so we need to concentrate on few techniques and that's what i do i don't um, you know i don't go different markets i don't apply too many things i just use few techniques again and again and again i do know a lot but i use few during the day because i i know they work and i'm comfortable with those so like bruce lee said i fear not the man who has practiced 10000 kicks once but i fear the man who has practiced one kick 10000 times so need to practice one kick 10000 times okay and master those, te those techniques which produce high and fast return. So the key is to identify the supposed resistance level, the trend lines, where the professionals can come, what is the potential, is there a potential in the trade, where is the risk, if I'm wrong, how much I will lose, etc. And then when you combine swing, so this is swing trading, when you combine swing trading stocks with the options, the, the return can be huge, so astronomical three to five percent return a quick return in the stock turns into 40 to 80 percent return in option so the trick is to have a proper entry in the proper place know the potential in the stock the stock pulls back and use the proper options so select the proper option um, the stock can move, and if you don't select the proper option, uh, we still end up losing money. So that's another thing. So money-making strategies. I use these three, and I'll show you more. When the stock is breaking out, like uh, Boeing broke out, I think on Friday, I'll show you the chart. I missed the move, though. I didn't um, catch it, but I'll show you. Breakout reversal, I'll show you some chart where the stocks uh, come down to some support level and then it reverses upward fully and breaks out. So that's breakout reversal. The third one is opening range breakout strategy. Also every day in this strategy, this, uh, like right now I have 600 stocks. It's from 500, it has gone to 600. So I have 600 stocks. I cannot monitor all 600. So on one of my monitor, I have set up a window where I say, okay, which are the stocks which are making a new intraday high during first five minutes, after five minutes have passed. So I clearly see what are those stocks which are making new high intraday after five minutes have passed, the volume is high. And uh, so I know, so like those suppose there are 10 stocks. So I know those are the 10 stocks. If out of those 10 stocks, one of those stock is mine, where the position is already open, then I know, okay, I'm good. Uh, that stock, uh, um, uh, let's watch that stock because the, the, the move can fade. If the move is fading, I take profit. If the move is, it looks like it will continue, I stay. Sometimes we make mistake, the move fades, we exit and the move continue. So that can happen or the move fade and you exit and it was your right decision. So after five minutes pass some stocks start showing up in that window so i i know that kind of it's right in front of me in one of the monitor so i'm watching it i'm watching other things my open positions in the market and other things going on so then uh, 15 minute pass those out of those 10 uh, some of the stocks move to those 15 minute window so after 15 minutes it's still moving uh they show up so out of 10, six stocks could show up in a 15 minute window. So I say, okay, yeah, so these 15 are still moving. So now I start paying some uh, serious attention to them because um, I need to 
catch one of those. So I start looking at the earnings. I look, start analyzing them. I take a look at the option chain. I see what's the news. So things like that, I start analyzing and while watching my open position. So suppose out of six, two, I narrow down that, okay, if they're still good, I'll take one of those. Then there's another one 30 minute interval. When 30 minutes pass, then um, some stocks show up. So suppose one or two. Then I, I pay attention, five minute uh, chart, see if I can time it, if, if, if it's going into consolidation and I can time it, and I know that the, the, um, the, the potential is still there, then I get in if the option is also good, otherwise I buy shares. So from five minute window to 15 minute window to 30 minute window, and then when it's done, I set up 60 minute window and I say, okay, let's see if any stock makes a breakout after an hour because a lot of news come at 7.30 Pacific. So I watch that and time my, um, take. I can take the trade later. So that's the whole process of opening range. And I suggest you do that too. And you can filter out of 600 stocks, you can easily filter few. So um, both on the upside and the downside. Otherwise, how are you going to monitor? It's hard. So at least five minutes is there. The stock needs to move above the first five minute of those, uh, you know, buying. So at least you should set up five minutes. Then there are four more, gap up, gap down, gap up reversal, gap down reversal. So gap up is the, any, all, almost all stock gap up. If, if it gaps up one cent, it gaps up. But I'm looking for 80 cents and above gap. So I've set up, only show me those stocks which have gapped up 80 cents and above. So I watch that. And when the stock gaps up, there are certain things happen. When the stock gaps up, either it gaps up, there are some gaps which I just ignore it because they, they just gap up, like gap up in the sky. Uh, when the gas, stock gaps up in the sky, you don't know where is the resistance, where is the support um, Do So it's hard. So those stocks, I just ignore it uh, unless uh, it pulls back and then I find the support and I say, okay, this looks like a right support. So I get in, otherwise I ignore those. Now the stock which gaps up resistance right above the resistance. So think this way. You close your eyes and you say, okay, draw a horizontal line. And you say, okay, this is the resistance. You look back on your daily chart and you clearly see where is the resistance and then today the stock has gap above that resistance so that's pretty good now how far stock up that resistance that's another key so if it has gap up above way above the resistance then uh, you have a problem because if the stock can pull back and if it pulls back, then that resistance is now support. So it could be far from your entry. So let me give you an example. Suppose 100 was the resistance and now the stock is trading. It. So you look at it and you say, okay, it gaps up, but it can come back to 100 resistance, which is now support. So if you time your entry at one or four, four, you want to time around one or one, somewhere closer. You will not get it hundred. You may, but it happens, and we do that. But it's hard. So need to know if the stock has gap above the resistance or below. Stock has gap up below the resistance, then expect a sell-off. So when you expect a sell-off, 
then what I do, if I have an open position, I immediately sell. I don't wait. I don't think, okay, it gap um, up and it gap below the resistance. Should I hold to see if it breaks resistance or should I sell? No, I sell. Because at that time, the, 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 that's the best price I will get in the option. Other traders are trying to buy. Uh, the, the spread is getting wider. I set my sell off. And if I see, suppose the bid is 760, the ask is eight, and I see the last price was 780, I set my 780 price, boom, I'm out right at the open. Then I worry about, okay, if the stock uh, continues up, if the stock continues up, then I will next month or I will buy another strike. But in the beginning, I'm out, right? So that's what I do, gap up, gap down, uh, gap up and gap up reversal. So if the sell-off is severe, you can buy puts, but I don't buy puts on gap up reversal. I tend to exit if I have ex existing position. Now the gap down, in the gap down, the stocks, just think like this, most of the time stock gaps down at some support level. It's like giant support where the stock gaps down, especially when the stock was uh, trading um, down pre-market. So if the stock is trading down in pre-market and you have a position in it, or you know that the stock is gapping down, you need to watch the, um, the pre-market action. So when you watch the pre-market action and you see where the stock is trading, you don't you don't look at the chart you just look at the price so you say okay this is the price down this is the price this is the price so you just make a mental note that this was the low ballpark and this was the high so now the stock gaps down at market open so when the stock gaps down and market open and it's trading above that pre-market low so chances are that this, the pre-market low has already been formed, especially if the five, mark, five minute chart, five minute has passed and the stock is just still trading at, above that pre-market low. And on top, the stock is at 50 day simple moving average or 200 day simple moving average. So it's trading at 50 day or 200 day moving average. Um, you know, uh, go long. So I watch the, these kind of stuff and I go long. And if, if the action, most of the time they act for option, the action has to be furious, fast and furious to the upside. Uh, a gap down reversal is better if you buying shares and then hold it for, for a while. It's not like you will get immediate result, but it's a safer, it's low risk and you need to hold, you need to put some money tied up. Sometimes you will see the furious reversal to the upside. So the furious reversal, that's where when I see that gap down reversal, that's when I buy uh, calls because I know the risk right there and I know the bottom has formed. And in the gap down reversal, you need to identify the resistance level. If you can identify the resistance level, then you get out before the stock holds its move to the upside at resistance level. So you have to be careful at that. You have to know both support and resistance level, get out before the resistance hit because the move dies after a few hours. Okay, so I have swing option service for $17. If you're interested, let me know, send me an email, please. I will send you the PayPal link. It's only for two weeks and it's only for new people, not those who just took the trial left for some reason and now I want to take another trial for $17. Okay, so here's the Apple chart. This is what I showed you. This is an old chart, but I included it. And I showed you that this is Apple wants to go higher, but then there was a news, it, it, it broke, it came to 170. So I bought more calls at 170. So, you ha we have to identify the support below the support. So if one support is broken, 
If you can identify another support, then you know, okay, this support is broken, but this support is right there. So the, the buyers can come in. So I bought more at 170 strike, and I knew this was the resistance, and I sold the 170 strike. So this was a low risk when the, the stock fell down on the news, uh, you know, the, that they were hiding some features. And this is what I uh, saw the move. So do you see the 50 day broke, then it, it uh, next day it conquered. So when it starts moving, boom, 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 early morning, and you know it's, 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 it has recovered 50 day moving average, then it is a, a low risk entry. So the stocks break 50 day, people try to short, traders buy ports, um, then the stock next day reverses, and when it reverses, then all those who are short or buying puts, they are freaking out and they are covering it. So, so it starts going up and up and up, and then you know, okay, if you buy at 170, then it fell, so you sell at 175. So if it breaks again another 175, then I'm going to buy calls and sell here at 178 plus. So this is my resistance level, which I have already identified right there, 178. So I already know what to do. So, so let's say in the morning, Apple starts moving. I know, okay, so I don't need to think what is doing. I, I look at five minute chart. This is CVS. I think I showed the chart on 21st December. I, I said that we, and we were long. And this is the way I showed, it's the chart prepared on 21st December. So I showed you before Christmas, and this is what happened. I, and I mentioned that we need to go long, and we were long. You see gap up to 78, boom. So it's, it's trying to, if, if you're looking at this chart, you would say, okay, 72 is a pretty good, support level and if you suppose identify a 73 74 then your risk is here there's one support here and then 50 day moving average support here so pretty good chances that it's going up it's not going to come down and then boom i i was out so think later what it will do after this move another one cvx i mentioned again on 21st december before Christmas, because after Christmas, this is the, uh, that was the last webinar we are doing it. This is the first one. Again, I said the oils are moving, crudes are moving. So when the crudes are moving up, you, you look at the crude chart. So I look at the crude chart. Crude is a support. Crude has the potential to go up. Crude stocks are moving. Now it's a matter of, of uh, selecting the stock which you want to go long. CVX, SLB, Exxon, which one you want. So sometimes we make a mistake and select the wrong stock. All other stocks are moving. Only the stock which you bought in that category is not moving. Sometimes it move, the stock moves late. Sometimes it doesn't move. If it's not moving, then, then that stock disease, you know, so it's like a disease, it's not moving. Something is wrong. Nobody's interested in buying. So. This is what I showed you, and I, we went long. As I, I said that we are long on CVX, and simple. Look at the crude. Look at the crude star. You can make a basket of all the crude stocks, your favorite crude stocks. You can make the basket, right? So if you make the basket on a crude day, you watch the crude stock. And this is what happened on CV. We hit the resistance, I exited. Now. CVX is this long term resistance is, is sitting at 128. If it breaks, then we will go long. I, I show you these kind of chart when the stock is trying to poke its nose and sitting here, sitting here, sitting here. Uh, it will, and you, you, uh, so just keep this in mind that okay, if it breaks here, is uh, it will go up. And you see when the tiny candles are forming on the top, 
just pay attention because it, it doesn't want to go down. It, it, uh, the, these tiny candles telling us it, it doesn't want to go down. One tiny candle could be dangerous, but another one formed is bullish pin bar. It's saying that, okay, the buyers are there. They just rest. It's, it's CVX is resting. And CVX is resting from 113. You, uh, it's, it's riding up from 113 level. You see here, 113. So it's, it's in uptrend. So if you see the break, you get in or see some pullback like 124, 125. This is another one, SLB, we were long. And and it's like flying every day but i exited too early and you see slb so slb and cv are both flying so exited slb early again i showed you this chart when it broke this reason i said we need to go long and then i sold it here somewhere this is baidu so we went long on Baidu, made money you see this chart on 2nd of January. So this is what I saw, the support. So if you draw this line, rising trend line, sitting at support, crossing the 50-day moving average, moving good. Uh, the overall market was good. So what is there not to take the trade? The market is going up. It's the first day of the year. Um, if you see, if you have Baidu, everybody should have Baidu in their port, in their watch list. So Baidu is one of the, uh, the stock which you should have, like Baba, Baidu. So when you see a stock like that moving, you need to think later. I mean, think now, ask question later, execute it, and then you say, okay, where do I take profit? So Baidu kept going. Again, the same, same with Baba. So look at the Baba support. So it was just resting, 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 and it jumped up. So when you see any any stock which is doing like this, tiny, tiny candles, it's just resting, 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 and then it gaps up. And it's, suppose it gaps up and you don't know whether to take entry or not. Let's see the 50-day moving average. Stock gaps up and then crossing 50 Get in. Don't wait. Don't wait. Take action right away. Boom. Worst come worst, what will happen? You will lose some money, right? So don't put too much money. That's the worst thing can happen. I ask question, will I die? If I take, go long in Baba, am I going to die? The answer always come, no, you will not die. So I say, okay, I'm gonna buy it. So I never died. One time I really died when I took Goldman Sachs trade and put all my money and it went against me. I was really dying. After that, I learned. So Baba, you see, keep going. Baba, keep going. Now this is the resistance level at 193. So if it crosses, I'm going to 200. Any star which is close to 191, 192, cross 193 is going to. So think it like that. Okay, so it's one, it crossed this line. It's 193. Now she showed me the chart and it's crossing. I think it's going to 200. I go long. So you go long. FB, another one. So we went long in FB. So again, is uh, you see, 50-day moving average. There is a support at here based on this support line. 50-day moving average. Boom. Don't think. Go long. Went long, and it is still long. But here it's 186, 187. Right there is the resistance level. If you draw this line. So ask question later, go long first. This is what we did, FB, simple. Another one, yeah, see that? So prepare the chart on Friday, FB. Now it's really sitting at resistance. So it doesn't mean if it's sitting in resistance, then I receive email, should I sell my shares? I have it in my retirement, I get out? No, don't get out. Only get out if you have option like next month. That's the only exit you have unless there's a big sell off, some major news. Otherwise, don't get out from your shares, from your retirement account. Disney. So this was a perfect 
uh, we had um, trade here at Disney, and then it pulled back. And then when it did it started doing this, so I send alert to buy more and we'll make money. So we did make money and we exited here. So when you see action after this fall for five days, I, I think we got our, got, uh, we got in here at this red candle and then it pulled back and then it reverses. So when you see action like this and you are already in a position, you need to add some more. So don't think of whether I add some or not add. What if you see action you like this, you add more. Gap up, full reversal, volume is good. And then, so if you add more to your position, you have a lower exit point. So if you don't add, you may exit at your entry point or you make some money. But if you add and you see, I mean, you, you have to really look at it and then add to your position, exit here, you will make more money. It's always good to add, um, buy those where you are already in a, because I got in earlier, my, my thesis was that the stock is going up and then it went down and now it's going back above you know, to the direction where I, which I predicted, I need to buy some more. So this is where I exited on this day at the end. And then you see it's sitting right here. So, so now uh, there's no entry. So there's no entry here. So just ignore it. If it pulls back, then we go long. This is NVDA. So NVDA sent alert here to buy. I showed you the chart. I think I showed you the chart. And this is the 2nd January. We went long and then boom, it went like crazy. I send the complimentary trade to all the people, subscribers who are in my database to go long on NVDA. So sometimes this happened. Suppose I, I send complimentary alert, go long at 196, 197. That's 197 um, we entered. And then it goes to um, one, two points. And then if you are not a member, you don't know what we are doing as a paid member. You exit, took a loss, and then you see 15 point move up. So then um, you send the email. I lost money from your free trade. So, well, yeah, but the thing is, that's why you pay so that you can manage. You know what we are doing. So you see here, I got it out early and it is still moving at 215. So if you see this rising line and it's touching and then sitting here, get in especially when on this day when it uh, gapped up i exited on this day on a gap day uh, fast and furious i left some money on nvda but the thing is if you are in a swing suppose you have option trade and you have a stock also at least if you are out of your option position and you still have shares in your other portfolio making money in that trade i feel bad I left money, but most of the time the exit is perfect. IBM. So you see this chart again. I show you third January. So when you see, if you if you see this during the day that IBM gaps up, then you can go long. But the thing was when IBM gapped up, I was watching it for entry. So I said, okay. Oh, so I will wait for it to come down. And it so happened that it gaps up and pull back severely. Start pulling, boom, 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 it was pulling back. So when it was pulling back, when it touched, I said, okay, I need to go long. So I bought options, I sent alert because it was a low risk entry. So luckily this is what happened, gap up and pull back to support and then five minute chart gave entry, the RN. And then on the same money, and then I think the next day we sold IBM calls.
and shares I have also have shares. So IBM is still rising. So it's going to 165. Okay, Adobe. So Adobe, again, this chart I showed, I think I showed, uh, maybe I sent alert. That, uh, yeah, I sent alert that Adobe, uh, if it breaks 178, this level, we need to go long more, we buy more. And that's what it did as an alert. So we had two strikes. One we are still holding, one we sold. So, um, Adobe is going up. So you see this line touching, touch, touch. If the stock touches a certain support and resistance line three times or more, it becomes a strong support and resistance. So you pay attention. So if you time one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, how many times is touching this is the rising support line? So when you see this touch, 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 you say, okay, pretty good solid support. I'll go long. And then when you see 50 day moving average break, go long. Don't wait. Why wait? Worry about, you know, exit here. It depends what you have, option, shares, short term, weekly, what do you have? So exit depends also, this is another question, exit depends on what you have. So, so you know, should I exit? So just, that's the question, should I exit? So then I say, how do I know? What do you have? Do you have leap? Do you have shares? Do you have a current month option, three month option, weekly option? Is it expiring tomorrow? Today is Thursday, what do you have? Then I can tell you exit or don't exit. So exit depends on what you have and how many you have. So if you have 10 contracts, you exit like six, then you have four. But if you have only one and it's uh, expiring one week later, then yes, you. So Adobe keep going, you see 185. This PayPal, so I sent alert to PayPal. So this is what I saw. And I sent alert to members to buy PayPal. So you see this way, boom, 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 touching, 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 touching. How many times is touching? So when it's, you see how many times touching and then it is squeeze from here on resistance. I went long. I know I, I wait, if I wait for break, I will miss the entry. So I said, okay, it is just temporary. It will break. So I went long on, on PayPal and exited after two days with profit. So you see, this is what I saw in our send alert. So yeah, I think uh, we exited, um, let's see, yeah, we exited right here. So break and boom. EXP, we don't have any position, but I prepared the chart. So you see this gap and this is the support and it gaps up at 50 day. So I don't have a, it gaps up, but then uh, I, I I didn't get in. So if, if it pulls back and I'm like in the middle of this candle and then it rises, then I will get in. So I'm watching EXP. MZOR, so I bought few shares the first time I traded. I think option was not good. So when I saw this move, I said, okay, I'll take some risk. You see here, this is the support, this candle, and then this candle. So if you draw this line from here, this here, this is the support. So, so I went long at this and I said, okay, if it breaks, I will get out. So this is, uh, uh, um, this was the first time I traded, so I need to stop first what's going on, then I will trade more. So it, it's now sitting under 50 day moving average. Twilo, I did not, um, we don't have any position officially, but I send the alert that it's setting up to my end of day service and it has bottom. So it's, it's going up. It's still up chance to buy some shares and just hold it long. It has bottom. You see this from long term, from May of 2017. See, it did not break. 
So if you go along, uh, if you go on the left side and you see it tested here, then it tested here. When it tested here, it tr it came down all the way, right? Then they 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 didn't didn't let it go on this below this level. And then next day, when I when I send the alert, end of day that fellow is long. So you can buy some shares, hold it. You know your stop. If stop is is below this purple line. So the stop is right here. If you see any pullback, it's opportunity for you. Over stock, we made some money. It's still long. I showed this. Uh, I don't know if I showed this chart, but I did send alert on my end of day based on this. And again, touching, 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 touching. And then when it makes a move like that, you don't think you go long. And this is what happened. Now it's at resistance. Goldman Sachs. Now Goldman Sachs is sitting right there. Financials are not. Oh, Goldman Sachs, I like. So you see, there's up and down, up and down candle. So, but 252 is the support right here. So up and down, up and down. I think Goldman Sachs is ready to move up. So Goldman Sachs. It's going up. MRK, MRK is sitting on 50-day moving average. Watch this. It gap up. It's just sitting right now. It's if it's not moving up, you can go long. Citigroup, another financial. You see, it's, it's facing tremendous resistance at 75, 76 level. So if you see the move above this line. You go long. You know that there is a 50-day moving error. There is a support line here, 74. So this is pretty good support at 74. So if 74 is a support, it's 75, 50. So if it breaks, you go long. Don't wait. Don't think. The same for Morgan Stanley. It looks like it's going up. 52 is the support. You see how many candles at 52? So it doesn't want to break 52. So if you see going up, you go long, go long, don't wait. BXP, I prepared this chart. I will watch. I don't have any position. So I saw this candle. I said, okay, if it's reversing, looks like after a big sell-off, it reversed. But if it if it's come closer, like another candle here, mid cover another uh, distance, then it's a long position. So after this sell-off, they were buyers, but it can continue downward move, so I didn't rely on this. When was moving on Friday, so I went long, so I'm long on win. Watch this. The support is way below at 158. There's another support at 160. So if you see when moving up, go long. Don't wait. And 172 is the resistance so your end exit is 172 unh i prepared this chart i don't have it so i'm just watching based on support line so if i see the move i will get in either if it pulls back to 225 that will be better low risk otherwise if i see the move on news i go go up i mean go long cmg cmg it looks like has reverse this trend so this was the bottom right here and then this gap up then gap up news the ceo change so cmg looks like has reversed to the upside and the downfall um or downfall is slowly slowly it's going up but i don't have any position in it NTES, you watch this. This is a wild stocks. Again, this is the support line. So if you see the move, get in. Here is your support, 339, 340. So NTES is a wild stock. So options is expensive. These are expensive. So based on your portfolio. Another one which is sitting right, a squeeze at the support and resistance is NOC. It's a $308 stock. You see here support is it's kind of 
squeezed in. So if you see the big move up, you go long. And, and then you watch um, um, this resistance line. If it breaks, then you hold for higher target. There's nothing here on the left. There's no, no resistance base. Another one is EDU. So EDU is trying to break the resistance. It, it, it fell down and then it reversed. So now it needs to conquer this red line support resistance. So if, if it breaks 101, 101.50, it's going up. So what EDU? This candle says that it does not want to go down. But watch 101 break, 101, 101.50 to the upside. Another one is LF going up. I don't have any position. I'm just watching it. It's in a rising trend. So if I can catch it, I'll catch. It's, I just put it on my watch list. And then when I see it, proper entry, I get in because I already seen it. I say, okay, now is the time to get in. Same for PII is sitting right at the support at 125, 50 day moving average and this support. So if I see PII moving up, I'll get, get back. I will get in because I know, okay, it's 123 is the good support. Win, Windham Worldwide is also at support. You see 110, there is a support under the support. When there is a support under the support, it's very good. That's what you have to look at. When there is a resistance above the resistance, it's a good shot. When there is a support below the support, it's a good long because it's like a double cushion you have. So if you fall um, from the, suppose you jump on the bed and then you fall on the floor and there is another mattress on the floor, chances are you will not get hurt. But there is no mattress, it's just a cement floor. You will get hurt. So always look for that support below the support. Same thing with blue, so it's sitting right there. So if, if I see the move up, I'll get in because I know that, okay, it's time to get in. Now this is the SPX chart. So SPX, is, I'll just show you the chart is continuously going up. There are techniques to determine where it's going. So it's going to 3100 and it's sitting right here at the support, 2700 is the support. So. One option I see nearby is Sally. I don't know why my left my cell phone is start talking. <laughs> Somebody hacking my cell phone. So okay, so so uh, this twenty seven hundred is the is the support and thirty one hundred is the target for S and P. This is Nasdaq hundred. So you see that uh, sixty five hundred target was given and now it's sixty six fifty three. This was the support 63 is, is, is in the rising trend. There's no reason for you and me not to, uh, not to be long in the market. The market is going up. There's no reason for us to. Russell is at the resistance level. I wanted to show you this chart. So you see resistance at 1560. So watch Russell 2000. It needs to break 1560-65. If it breaks 1560-65, there's a new trend beginning, right? So you see how many times it's hooking its nose, 1560, and it's not able to break. So just watch this is this index. So you have to watch uh, multiple indexes, not just one, and then focus on it. And then um, you see the other one going up and then you're focusing on that one while the other one is not doing good. And that is the one which uh, affects the other and then the other one starts coming down or the one which is moving, you're not focusing on that, on other, because the other one is not doing much or coming down. But uh, the one you're not watching is going up and you are in the wrong direction, then what happens? The, the one which is moving up, suppose in NASDAQ, brings back all the other stops. So which index is having effect? Oh, and that's the way I did it with QQQ long, about two weeks ago at 152, target was 162. 
so I saw the Nasdaq. There was a sell-off two to two days before, and then I saw the support. So I said, okay, we need to go long on QQQ. So we went long at 152, 153, made a bunch of money. Members made like 30,000, 35,000, bunch of contracts. Exited at 162 on Friday. So I, I don't have any position in QQQ. If you're interested in index option service, you can go to the website and sign up. It's $207 for three months. If you are an existing member, you have a discount, you just send me an email. So this is it. Uh, yeah, another thing is that I have a, a coaching session also, coaching uh, six month coaching program. If you're interested, I go into detail. Detail. It's a six month program. If you're interested, let me know, send me, and I will book a 45 minute interview and we will talk and I will explain to you how it works. And then we go from there. All right, so that's it. It's uh, 6 50, so 50 minutes. I'll see you on next Sunday, 6 o'clock.